Hey everybody, Steve with the PATC here. And on today's episode of Plastic Bits, we're gonna be taking a look at yet another obscure toy line from the 80s. One of which uh, I kind of fell in love with and fell out of love with within about 15 seconds when I was a little kid. So these guys right here, you might recognize them. Uh, they are a staple of flea markets and uh, toy lots. You'll find them down at the bottom of the box. Uh, so who the heck were these robots with the suction cup for feet and the sweet, sweet hugging action? Well, hang with me and find out as we take a look at RoboForce. Introduced in 1984 by Ideal, RoboForce is the story of a toy empire that really never was. It featured a huge rollout with tons of support and sundry products and even a pilot episode of a cartoon. But as the 80s would prove, just because you've got a cartoon and toys doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be successful. So let's take a look at the initial offering from the toy line and try to figure out where we went wrong. The initial wave was comprised of nine robots, five good guys, and four bad guys. On the good guy team, we had Soda, the creator, Max Steel, the leader, and as you can see, these were a really strange choice for design. Uh, suction cups for feet, and that weird crinkly bendy tubing for the arms. But each robot did feature snap-on weapons and grappling hooks, etc. But moving on, we had Wrecker, Coptor, and rounding it out for the good guys, we had Blazer and Guardian. As for the bad guys, we had Hundred, the leader. We had Vulgar, Cruel, and enemy. They came in really cool window boxes and the back of those boxes featured awesome painted cross-sell artwork. There were even mini comic pack-ins telling the story of Max Steel and Hundred. And as you can see with these packaged examples, they really put a lot into the packaging to get kids into these things. They also supported the figures with a couple of vehicles, Max Steel's Robo Crusher and Hundred's Dread Crawler. But perhaps the crowning jewel of all of it was Max Steel's Fortress of Steel. Now, I gotta say, I picked up one of these a couple of years ago at Time Bomb Toys in Spokane. And I'm gonna be honest and tell you, I think it was one of the best 80s play sets out there. And there was a plethora to choose from. It could fold together like Castle Grayskull, and it featured all kinds of different stations, lifts, and gun turrets, and accessories for the figures themselves. If you're a vintage collector, I would highly recommend seeking one of these out, as they can still be had for a pretty reasonable price, and just the engineering and play value built into them is pretty incredible. So I mentioned earlier this was actually a really well-supported line, uh, probably one of the most supported that nobody's ever heard of. It actually had a pilot episode that made it onto some networks, and was later stuffed in the archives until it was released with, of all things, the challenge of the GoBots when they hit DVD as a special kind of a Easter egg. So the rollout had a store blitz with tons of marketing and it featured just a, an amazing array of support type products. I mean, you had a Max Steel magazine, you had read-alongs, you had little golden books, you had a remote control Max Steel, Erector got in on the action with their Erector sets. You had a RoboForce board game with a pop up matic bubble, a Max Steel phone. You even had a card game and bed sheets for Pete's sake. So how did this all go wrong? Well, my idea is that it was coming in at a time in 1984 when you already had Transformers and GoBots on the shelves. And when you take a look at the design of the figures, they were relatively simplistic. Uh, sure, they had accessories that snapped on and actually stayed on. Uh, they had hooks and all kinds of different features built into the figures, but they really just looked like something out of the 50s. I mean, you had these really awesomely designed humanoid robots and transformers and GoBots with vac metal and die-cast parts, and really, with RoboForce, you just had this group of guys that looked like floating garbage cans or, I mean, as a stretch, maybe... R2-D2 finally hit the gym and he started putting his reps in. So maybe it was just the design of the figures that didn't appeal to kids. 
because Lord knows Ideal really, really tried to make this one work. But it was here today, gone tomorrow. There were tons of prototypes that never made it out to the market. Um, and some of them are seeing the light of day because just like any 80s franchise, <laughs> everybody is trying to get in uh, on nostalgia. So we had a series by Toyfinity using the Glios locking system. And eventually, Nassal just picked it up, and they're doing something that is Max Steel in name, but they decided to dump the suction cups and actually give these guys arms and legs. But I don't know how well that's going to do, because it really seems to me like this is the toy line that was designed for everybody to love, but nobody cares or remembers. So what do you guys think out there? Do any of you remember getting these toys? Do any of you remember licking the suction cup and making a disgusting mess all over the window and getting put in the corner for it? If you have any stories, we'd love to hear them. Share in the comments below or find us over on Facebook, the Plastic Adventures Toy Community. And if I don't hear back from you, I'll see you in the toy aisles.